Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Now, yesterday, I created a video on the new features inside Unreal Engine 5.2. And one of those features is actually being able to cache a Niagara simulation. So one of y'all wanted me to make a tutorial, so that's what we're going to be doing right now. So here is the project that I opened yesterday. This is already 5.2. I'm not going to create a new project because I honestly don't have a lot of hard drive space anymore. Uh, first things first, we have to enable that plugin. So go to edit, plugins, and for the sake of the time here, I went ahead and did it. So Niagara, and basically what you're going to need is that Niagara sim caching right here. And I'm going to turn on the Niagara fluids as well. Um, anything with the end right here, just turn it all on. And then after that, we start your project. So I'm already here, already turned it on. I created a new folder named sim. Now you can use this with any particle Niagara system you have, but I'm just going to use the built-in ones so you can replicate this uh, at home. Okay, so I'll right click here. I'm going to go to FX and system. And I'm going to say new system from a template or behavior example. Next, perfect. And I have a really, really good fun one in here. There's actually a lot of good ones in here if you want to check it out. I like this grid 3D gas simple particle source. I'm going to finish that. That's going to open it up. And I'm just going to leave it by default. And then next, what I'll do is I'll move out. I'm going to drag that system in there. And as you can see, it is already on fire. It's on fire, man. Now the color is changing because there is a post-process volume, it looks like, inside that little studio lighting, but that's okay. You can use it in your scene as well. So here you go. That's fine. So here is our particle system, just like so. And what I'll do is I'll double click that. I'm just going to edit it a little bit because that is kind of flowing a little bit too much. So with that being said, I'm going to go to my particle source emitter, and I'm going to go to loop behavior. I'm going to say once. So once it's done spouting nuts and fire, it should stop. And then I'm going to go to the actual lifetime max, and I'm going to set that to 0.1. So this actually controls the particle. So for the loop duration infinite, I'm going to say fixed. Press play. Boom. All right. So that's what we want. Kind of just like a burst of energy. We don't want it flowing constantly. So that's all I'm going to do right here. I'm going to compile and then save and uh, wait for this. Minimize then. As you can see that our little burst is happening right there. So I'm gonna press G so that we can hide all the icons. There is a sequencer already enabled here in this project, but you can create your own, it's fine. So I'm gonna add this particle system to this demonstration right here. So I'm gonna control, scroll out, and he's gonna do a little front bent like that. And this is where we're gonna be adding that simulation. I'm gonna go to track, actor sequence, and we're gonna look for that new end system. Double click that, that's okay. And in here, as you're gonna see, nothing's gonna happen because again, before this was a thing, you had to simulate, right? Or enable the track in the sequencer. But now you can record that simulation. There's actually three different ways on how you can do this, but this is the easiest as far as I know. So here we go, I'm gonna click on plus track and we're gonna open a component. And again, we're gonna go click track and then we're gonna open up the life cycle track, all right? So that's gonna open it up and as you can see, that is actually lined up perfectly in there. So right here, I don't want it to start right away. So I'm going to wait, boom, right there, right? So that, that's where I want it to be. And what I'll do is I'm going to press G. I'm just going to position that right. Okay, so that's good. And I just want to make sure in 3D space that that's actually correctly positioned as well. So move it to the left. I'm going to remove my snapping tool right here so we're not snapping. Bam. That's a little bit too perfect. All right, so I'll move it kind of like that. Uh, but as you can see right here when I play back, so as you can see right here, we can't really scrub through this. And this is why this recording simulation is perfecto. So what I'll do is I'm going to scroll out. I'm going to move the end beginning point closer to the simulation so I don't have to simulate the entire thing. And now what I'm going to do is click on this Niagara component once again. And you're going to see now we have this Niagara cache. So I'm going to click on that, and now if I press record, boom! All right, so I'm going to wait until that kind of settles. That's fine. And once I'm happy with that, it's going to dissipate. I'm going to press stop. And now, if I turn on my camera view and turn off all of my icons and press play, bam! And I'll see, that's pretty much it. That's the end of the tutorial. Now that we have this recorded in our sequencer, I can actually scrub through this. And at the same time, I can even slow this down like... 
So that's pretty much it for this tutorial video. Hope you'll learn something new today. If you haven't done so, go check out my art station. Additionally, I do create Fortnite islands now too. So if you do have Fortnite, come play with me every now and then. I do a live stream. It's really fun. I get owned by my own subscribers because I am a noob. See y'all in the next one. Peace out.